It's 2026. Microsoft seems committed to turning Windows into the biggest dumpster fire humanly possible, and Valve is pushing the Steam Deck and Steam Machine, both of which run Linux. And judging by the success of things like the Steam Deck, Linux is looking like a legitimate alternative to Windows as a gaming OS. And as someone who has been gaming exclusively on Linux for the last six years, I believe that I can give a solid overview of how capable Linux is as a gaming OS and at supporting gaming hardware. I will also touch on content creation, like streaming and recording games, as that is something that many people do these days, and it is important to me as a YouTuber. Without further ado, let's get to it. First, let us talk about actual game availability. As in order to do any kind of gaming, you need to, you know, have games to play. First of all, the vast majority of games do not have a native Linux build. Native Linux games are a meme. Hardly any are available, and the ports we do have are kinda terrible. So, you will be using compatibility layers like Wine and Valve's Proton, which is based on Wine, to play Windows games. Proton is what people use most of the time, with Wine being used only for games that are not bought on Steam, Linux also does not support APIs like DirectX natively, so compatibility layers like DXVK for translating DX9, 10 and 11 to Vulkan and VKD3D for translating DX12 to Vulkan are used in order to get good performance. And performance is genuinely good, usually plus minus 5% of what it is on Windows. But there are some caveats. Games that run on Vulkan, DX9, 10 and 11 run very well on Linux, with performance similar to or better than on Windows, on both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. But when it comes to DX12 games, NVIDIA cards get a massive performance hit in some cases. This is a topic that has been beaten to death at this point. The issue has been around for years. I'm going to link the discussion on the NVIDIA forums in the description so that you can read more about it. But the main thing you need to know is that NVIDIA cards massively, and I mean massively underperform in DX12 games on Linux compared to AMD cards that just run them as well or better than they do on Windows, which results in some hilarious results like the RX 9070 XT matching or outperforming the RTX 5090 in some games, which is completely insane. This should not be the case in any game ever. This does not happen in every DX12 game though as these are extreme cases, but do expect a 20-30% to 30 performance hit on Linux compared to Windows if you have an NVIDIA GPU. That, that is on average. The good news is the devs know about the issue, and there is a Vulkan extension which allegedly fixes NVIDIA's performance in DX12 games under Linux in the works. Rumors say that it will drop sometime in March or April, which seems like a bit of an optimistic time frame in my eyes, but I do think that they will actually sort out this issue by the end of the year. I do have a 5090, and I will test this fix as soon as it's available. So consider subscribing as to not miss that video. Just a thought. Anyway, that is it for performance. How about compatibility? Well, pretty much any single player game that you can think of will run on Linux these days. And in the last couple of years, big AAA games have been running flawlessly on day one for the most part, which was not the case four years ago when I made my first Linux gaming video. We sure came a long way since then, but what we still have an issue with is the kernel level anti-cheat in multiplayer games. None of the games that have it work. like. Absolutely none. Call of Duty? Nope. Valorant? Nope. Battlefield 6? Not a chance. You get the idea. All modern, popular multiplayer games do not work on Linux. Some multiplayer games, mostly older ones or ones made by smaller studios, do work, however. And Easy Anti-Cheat does offer devs the option to enable support for Proton and Wine. But not all devs enable this option. To find out if the multiplayer game you want to play, or you're currently playing, works on Linux, check out areweantycheatyet.com. 
I will link it in the description. This website has a list of pretty much all multiplayer games and it tells you if they will work on Linux or not. So if you're into multiplayer games, definitely check it out before switching to Linux. Multiplayer games made by Valve all have native Linux builds and are supported on Linux. So if you play Counter-Strike, Dota 2 or Team Fortress 2 a lot, you'll be happy to hear that you can play them on Linux just fine. As for features like FSR, DOSS, ray tracing, etc., Go, they are all supported under Linux. You can also use things like OptiScaler as well, and Reshade is fully functional, but not in Linux native games. At least I was never able to get Reshade to work in games that use Vulkan, like the new Doom games or Red Dead Redemption 2. If you know how to do this, please let me know. Using VK Basalt is a massive pain. You can set driver overrides for DOSS as well. So, let's say a game you want to play only has DOSS upscaling options and no native DLAA, you can just override all the upscaling options to DLAA using Steam launch options. I'll leave a link to the documentation for this in the description for your convenience. Mods also work pretty well in general, be they normal mods that are just files you paste in the game folder, or injector type mods like Kybes' mods for Doom Eternal and the Dark Ages or the RE framework mod for the RE engine games. Mods used to be an issue around the time I made my previous video back in 2022, which was quite a long time ago now that I think about it. Time sure does fly. Anyway, mods are not an issue these days. All the ones I tried work pretty well, with no issues. Now, let's talk about emulators. Every emulator you can think of has a Linux version. I have personally tried the PS4 and PS3 emulators and they work great. There are also plenty of videos of people running emulators on the Steam Deck, which is pretty cool. You can literally play Bloodborne from beginning to end on the Steam Deck. Bloodborne running on a PC is not something I expected to ever see, let alone it running on a handheld, but here we are. It's absolutely glorious. Okay, now let's talk about recording and streaming gameplay on Linux. It's something I do a lot of, or at least I used to stream a lot. I haven't done it in months now, but I will get back to it, I swear. Anyway, OBS is the best software you can use for this on Linux. You do have alternatives, like GPU Screen Recorder, which gives you NVIDIA Shadowplay-like functionality, has a similar UI, and it also works on AMD and Intel GPUs. But I use OBS Studio exclusively, because I am more familiar with it. Anyway, all the codecs you would use on Windows are supported on Linux as well. NVENC is readily available in OBS if you have all the NVIDIA drivers installed correctly, and it works just like it does on Windows. H.264, H.265, and AV1 all work. AMD has these implemented through GStreamer and FFmpeg VAPI, and Intel should be the same. Although, I can't really give you any details on Intel's implementation, as I do not own an Intel GPU. The equivalent of game capture on Linux is OBS VK Capture. It is performant, and it works great when you want to capture only the game you're playing. Everything else you can normally do on OBS on Windows, you can do so on Linux as well, with no issues. This was not the case a couple years ago, as getting AMD hardware encoding to work at all was a royal pain, and you had to juggle two different drivers at the same time. The proprietary one for OBS, so that you can get AMF encoding, and the open source one for the actual game you wanted to play, so that you could actually get good performance. It was a really weird time, but this issue was no more. I also want to mention capture cards as well for dual PC or a PC and console setup. UVC devices like my Elgato HD60 S Plus work fine. I know the HD60X and Camlink 4K also work very well. Any UVC device should work fine, but I do recommend you buy devices that officially support Linux. Something like the AV Matrix VC12 4K has official Linux support for example, so look for brands that actually do support Linux in order to have as few issues as possible. Any other streaming peripherals that require proprietary software that is usually only written for Windows are to be avoided, although there are some community-made pieces of software for some devices, like the Elgato Stream Deck, 
I can't really comment any further on any specific devices as my streaming setup is rather simple and I don't really use any fancy peripherals. But I do want you to keep in mind that usually many of these peripherals are designed to work only on Windows and lack any software support from the manufacturer on Linux. Speaking of peripherals, things like keyboards, mice and controllers are worth mentioning. In general, Razer and Logitech mice and keyboards are very well supported, but with other brands it really depends. My Keytron K2 keyboard is fully functional on Linux and I can access the web interface to configure it however I like and I can configure my Logitech mouse in something like Piper fairly easily. You can also use Piper to configure many other mice from brands such as G-Skill, Rowcat, SteelSeries and some others. You can check out the full file list here. Link will be in the description. Razer has their open razor software with which i've had a generally positive experience over the years so i do think that you will have a pretty good time if you have razor peripherals on linux for brands other than the ones i mentioned i honestly do not know you will have to do your own research as i'm not familiar with every brand making computer peripherals as far as controllers go i've personally only use the original Steam controller, the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 controllers, all of which were plug and play, both wired and via Bluetooth. Xbox controllers should work fine as well. As for everything else, I would assume Steam input would be perfectly capable of making it work the same way it does on Windows. The PlayStation 4 and 5 controllers have drivers built into the Linux kernel, so all of their features work. You shouldn't have to do anything other than connect them to your computer. If you want to see PlayStation glyphs in games that support them, you might have to disable Steam input, otherwise it will just emulate an Xbox controller and you will see the Xbox glyphs instead. PlayStation controllers work in emulators as well. I've used mine in a PS3 and PS4 emulator and the experience was flawless. Okay, so at the end of the day, how capable is Linux at gaming? I can confidently say it is very capable, but fact is that Almost all games are developed for Windows, so running them on an OS which they were never intended to run on comes with certain limitations. While Valve have done a great job with Proton, allowing for a click and play experience in most cases, it only really applies to single player games. With almost all popular multiplayer games not working due to their kernel level anti-cheat, that that demands you run Windows on actual hardware, as these things even detect virtual machines. I don't see things like Call of Duty or Fortnite ever being playable on Linux, so if you like playing those, just stay on Windows. Linux is not for you. If you have an Nvidia card, you will also have performance issues in many DX12 games. This is a bit of an issue, as most games release these days are DX12 and most people switching to Linux will have an NVIDIA GPU due to NVIDIA's market share. That said, the issue is known and its cause is also known and a solution is being worked on. Linux hardware compatibility is good in general, but some specialized peripherals that require software suites from the manufacturer in order to work might not work at all on Linux, as hardly any manufacturers bother with Linux support. Linux tools like Ratbag, with its graphical front end, Piper, work great for many mice. Razer has support for their peripherals, and things like OpenRGB give you lighting control for many different pieces of hardware. But as manufacturers don't really follow a set standard, many newer pieces of hardware might not be supported in OpenRGB. As you can see, my motherboard, controller, and mouse are getting picked up by OpenRGB, but my graphics card is not. So, it depends on what hardware you have. You can check if your hardware is compatible on their website, link is in the description, or you can try out OpenRGB on Windows, as it has a Windows version as well. You get the idea. You can game on Linux, especially if you only really play single player games, but many multiplayer games and exotic peripherals do not work, which might be a deal breaker for some. 2026 is 
in fact, not the year of the Linux desktop, as Windows just has better compatibility with pretty much everything. Linux is a good choice for many people, but I do not believe it will work for the general populace. But hey, we made massive progress in the last four years, and with Valve pushing things like Proton and their Steam machines, who knows where we will be in another four years. I hope that in the future I will be able to make a video in which I say that 2030 is finally the year of the Linux desktop. Anyway, what do you think about Linux gaming in its current form? Do you believe it can compete with Windows gaming in any meaningful way? Or is it still far off? Also, subscribe to motivate me to make more of these rambly videos, if you enjoyed this one, that is. Bye!